that they could play in December. Kansas State winners of four of its last five. UCLA took two of three, including its finale against Cal, to play in the Cactus Bowl this year. But the guy that got UCLA to the end, in part, Josh Rosen, will not play medically unable to go, says Jed Fish, the interim head coach. Jason Benetti, Jordan Rogers, along with you. Olivia Harlan is downstairs. Look, without Josh Rosen, UCLA loses the top passer in the Pac-12. Devon Monster, the freshman, is in. What do they get? Well, he's not Josh Rosen. It would be unfair to compare Devon Modster to a guy that maybe is the most accurate and most pro-ready quarterback in college football right now. But Devon Modster will bring a different element to this UCLA offense. Last time we saw him, he was entered into a game that was designed for Josh Rosen. I expect that Jed Fish, with the time off, extra bowl practice, is going to design something to utilize his mobility, get him outside the pocket, and play to his strengths a little bit more. Meantime, you said get outside the pocket. Skylar Thompson for Kansas State can do that. He started the last three and got them almost single-handed to this bowl game. Yeah, he's quickly becoming the cardiac kid. I mean, with a big upset at Oklahoma State, a late comeback at Texas Tech, another one at Iowa State. I mean, he's showing that he has the moxie and the playmaking ability to really lead this offense. Now, he started as the third quarterback when we opened up uh, back in August, so there are going to be some bumps. He's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but he can make some plays, and really, I'm looking for this Kansas State team to run the football tonight against UCLA defense that's porous. Question is, will he be at the controls for the final game coached by Bill Snyder? There have been some rumblings. He told us he has yet to make his decision on whether or not this will be his last game as Kansas State head coach. What we do know is the roof will be closed, but before they did that, the wings of blue parachuters came in. Cactus Bowl gets underway. Tell me it's leather next. So I get an epic plane in any phone. And I get this one free. All with unlimited gigs. Bro. It's a BOGO free phone, bro. Time for a switch. Switch to Boost and for a limited time you can buy one phone and get one free. Plus get five lines for only $100 per month, bro. Yeah, actually, hey, Grandma, let me uh, put you on speakerphone, okay? Carry out large three-topping pizzas from Domino's for $7.99 each. And with Domino's new carry-out insurance, we'll replace your pizza if it gets ruined after you leave the store. Just bring it back and we'll remake it for free. You can now reserve a car online and CarMax will hold it for you up to seven days for free. You come in when it's convenient. I know this because I'm from seven days in the future. Now, don't be frightened. Seven days in the future is a glorious place. After all, you had two good hair days in a row. Perfect. Right out of bed. And this car you reserved at CarMax.com is still being held for you for free. Pretty sweet. Or as we like to say, from seven days in the future, we still say pretty sweet. It's basically the same. Jed Fish told us during the week that he might wait until one minute before kickoff to decide on his quarterback. He was 29 minutes under the wire, about a half an hour in advance, Josh Rosen deemed to be out. How did it happen, Olivia Harlan? Well, Josh Rosen wanted to play tonight. He practiced all week and even warmed up in full pads. He tried to persuade team doctors in the 11th hour to let him play, but they thought after suffering two concussions this season, it wasn't for the best. You can see him hugging teammates. He gave me a shrug. He's obviously disappointed, guys. Last week, he told me it was important for him to try to win his first bowl game and finish a season, which he didn't last year. So Devon Monster will get the start. He split first team reps this week. Coach Fish told me he's ready and that nothing changes schematically. That's interesting. Split the first team reps. What does Monster lose and Jed Fish lose because of that? Oh, he loses valuable reps. I mean, he played most of their last regular season game after Rosen went down, but those extra practices are the best thing for teams to get guys ready, especially young quarterbacks. So splitting the reps, not ideal. He's going to be growing up even early in this game. UCLA won the toss and will defer. So Kansas State and a very dynamic special teams crew will have it first. DJ Reed has two returns for touchdowns this year, one kick and one punt. So that is something that UCLA will have to deal with all night long from Kansas State. Second in the nation at the end of the regular season in kick return and punt return average. So. J.J. Molson, the kicker for UCLA, has a very dangerous man back there.
Kansas State in its eighth straight bowl game, one of 16 teams in the nation to do that. It's a rematch of the Alamo Bowl from a couple of years ago, UCLA and Kansas State from Phoenix tonight. Molson strikes it and we are underway. Pringle from inside the 10. Byron Pringle is met at the hole by a Darius Pickett, and he gets to the 30-yard line. So the guy we were talking about, Skylar Thompson, as some joying goes on. Skylar Thompson, the freshman out of Independence, Missouri, went to the same high school as Albert Pujols for a couple of years, so fitting we're in a baseball stadium. But Skylar Thompson kind of has the it factor, right? Yeah, the it factor, moxie, call it what you want, but when he gets out there, guys rally around him. He plays with a confidence, a swagger. Like I said, he's a young quarterback, still learning. He may go through one or two progressions. You're going to see him get outside the pocket and try to make a lot of plays tonight. May see a lot of running from Kansas State this evening. UCLA second worst in rush defense in the country, ahead of only San Jose State. Play action on the first play for Thompson. He wants to go deep. His man had to wait, and it's incomplete for Pringle. Second down. Let's take a look at our impact players on this side of the ball. K-State offensively, UCLA on defense. Yeah, you're going to see a fullback in there, Jason Winston Dimmel. He's a guy that he will lead you to the football, and not many offenses in college football these days have a fullback on the field as frequently as Kansas State does. But the other guy on the other side of the ball, Kenny Young, They'll be going head-to-head -head all night. What do you mean lead you to the football? Well, he's going to be the guy. They like to run a power scheme, so you'll see him lining up formationally, and usually the ball carrier will be following him as they're doing right now. This is Barnes on the run. He stood up by Keyshawn Lucy or South, the redshirt sophomore, for a beat-up UCLA defense that gave up about 37 points a game. Yeah, and that's something we're going to keep an eye on. What is UCLA going to do when defensive coordinator Tom Bradley, who's one of the last coaches standing on that side of the ball, as Chip Kelly puts this new staff together, what are they going to do to slow down this Kansas State running attack? I think we're going to see safety of Darius Pickett rolling down into the box much more frequently than possibly they'd like. K-State only 32% on third down this year. Thompson calls timeout. You would think the team with the coaching change would do that first, but Kansas State in its 26th year under Bill Snyder burns one a minute and one second in. Problem, and now they're down to their third quarterback, although the record wouldn't indicate it late in the season. Alex Delton, Skylar Thompson have all taken snaps, and then the win against Iowa State. Thompson, the touchdown, and the 19th bowl under Bill Snyder in the last 21 years that he has been on the sideline. The patriarch of K-State football. This one is high, but brought in as a flag comes down. Isaiah Zuber, who had that touchdown against Iowa State, has a first down if it stands. Pass interference, offense, number nine. Third down. Zuber's a talented receiver, and you're going to see Skylar Thompson in this offense moving the pocket frequently tonight. Little pick play. Boy, that happens a lot. That's a play that happens a lot, but refs setting the tone early. They're not going to stand for that. But as an offensive guy, I didn't see anything wrong there. Yeah, I could tell where your bias lies. <laughs> oh, it happens a lot, he says. I mean, you know, as a receiver, as long as you're attempting to go onto a route and you're not physically extending your hands and blocking, I feel like it should be fair game, but refs are keeping it tight early. You also think there should be six downs, I assume? Of course. Yeah. At least. <laughs> Third and 20 for Kansas State. Thompson faked the screen, now goes the other direction for Pringle, who's got a lot of ground to make up, and he's out of bounds at the 28. Uh, great job here by Pringle, turning something out of nothing. It's a double screen. Initially, Thompson wanted to work to the left, hit Pringle late to the right. Good call on third down, something safe, easy for Skylar Thompson. But good job by UCLA, keeping everything in front of him forcing the punt and when you defer this is what you want it yeah. to look like if you're UCLA yeah, especially for a defense that's been struggling 
right, to come out and get a three and out in the first drive, let your offense go down there and set the tone. A Darius Pickett waves this off, and UCLA will have good field position for its redshirt freshman quarterback in his second start this year. His only other one came against Utah in a UCLA loss. Jetfish told us he's not going to change the game plan at all if Monster and now when Monster is in, but what do you think? Well, I think that might have been a little bit of coach talk, Jason, because you got a lot of time off. You had some practices that, you know, even if they thought there was a possibility Rosen could be back, in the back of their mind, they're developing a package of plays that they like for Devin Monster, Devon Monster, excuse me, to utilize his skill set, because him and Josh Rosen, very different players. I think they're going to move him outside the pocket. I think they might even design some runs for him tonight to get it and utilize his feet. Monster to throw on first down to the sideline and dropped by Jordan Lastly, It didn't come out cleanly out of his hand, but Lastly didn't look it in. Second down. Yeah, you're going to see my bias here again, Jason, because as a receiver, you want to switch your hands to the other side. He tried to cradle that one. You want to stab it, flip your hands the other way. That should have been a catch by Jordan Lastly, but for all he's done for this offense, you're going to allow him to have one to start the game. 61 catches this year. 12 in the game against Cal as this is Demetric Felton, the redshirt freshman, gaining 11 for a UCLA first down and your impact players over here. Impact pair player on that side of the ball just gave him a little criticism. Jordan Lastly is a heck of a player. He's strong, physical, maybe not the fastest or as we just saw, the purest catcher, but he is a playmaker. And if I'm Devon Modster, I'm going his way a lot tonight. DJ Reed on the other side, as good as he is on special teams, he'll be following Lastly around as well. Demetric Felton, who had two touches all year, has two in a row now. It's a gain of three, and you know playbook shenanigans can happen in your bowl game, especially with a new head coach for the moment. Yeah, we saw a little trick play there. We were going over the highlights. We didn't quite get to see it, but we had that play in. You hide the shortest running back you have behind a big, tall offensive line. You kind of just squeeze in the ball right as the quarterback takes it. Not surprised if we see a few more trick plays at a jet fish tonight. He's been waiting for this moment to be a head coach for a long time as Monster loads up and tosses a deep ball for nobody in particular. It's incomplete as Walker and Reed were there on the coverage. DJ Reed, who's had a fine season in the secondary for Kansas State. One thing Jed Fish mentioned is that Monster has great touch on his deep ball. He's got a great feel for it. That one's just the wrong read. Early in the game, a young quarterback, everything's moving probably a little faster than he'd like. Check that one down. How do you slow it down if you're a monster? You get him an easy completion, you get him in rhythm. So look for, even though it's third and seven here, look for a quick, easy throw. Although it's press coverage on the outside, might force him down the field. Kansas State rushes four. Monster to the sideline, incomplete. He wanted Theo Howard. He was latched on to by Duke Shelley and punt time, we think, for UCLA. That's an accurate ball. Another one that, you know, Maybe 50-50, that one comes down, but Kansas State pressed on the outside. What you got to do against a young quarterback, as I'm sure we'll see, is force him into the low percentage throws. Third and six and seven there. They wanted to work the tight end on and out, force him to push the ball downfield into those low percentage passes. We're three minutes in, and you're having noticeable quarterback anxiety with a couple I drops. Am Are you going to be okay? I don't know. This one goes out of bounds. Nice kick by Flintoft inside the five as we take a look at tonight's Franklin American Mortgage Company keys to the game. Jordan? Jason, football is a simple game. It really is. If you protect the football and you score points, you're probably going to win. But let's get to it. Kansas State continue to be special on special teams. UCLA is not a good special teams team. This could come down to a punt return, a kickoff return. We've seen how dangerous DJ Reed is. Confuse a young quarterback if you're Kansas State, as I just mentioned, and UCLA hold Kansas State under 200 yards. I know you're sitting on your couch saying, wait, that's not very good. Uh -huh. But they're averaging, giving up over 280. Keep them around their average. Slow this game down. Don't let them run all over you. Rarely do you hear that. Keep under 200, <laughs> know, you got right? a shot. Only one run play on the opening drive for Kansas State, and that will change here with the sophomore Alex Barnes, who is driven back. Rick Wade and Jaleel Wadu collaborated on the tackle. What a good start for the UCLA defense. Jason, something I want you to walk. watch quick. Watch these splits here by the offensive line. If you look to the left there between the guard and the left tackle, there's a gap. I was watching film. Not only did I say 
that Dimmel, the fullback, number 38, is going to lead you to the ball. But if you're watching on the couch, watch the splits of the offensive line. When they're passing, they're very, very close. And when they're running, you might see a gap in the direction that they're going to hand the ball off. When you say splits, for people who don't know, what are you looking at? How far apart these offensive linemen are. Traditionally, here we go. This is the run Kansas State wants with Barnes on a first down inside the 30-yard line across the 30 and a gain of 26. And a heck of a run here. That's what I'm talking about. Kansas State can run the football. You see a little zone read. Barnes make a great cut and gets vertical. He's dangerous. Explosive. He's got great vision. But as I mentioned, this offensive line for Kansas State will tip their run pass. See if UCLA watched the same film I was watching. Thank you. Saw that on Barnes, second fastest to 1,000 for K-State. The only guy faster, Darren Sproles, so certainly a big name there. As Thompson bluffed a throw and was undercut by Kenny Young, the leading tackler for UCLA. Now we're seeing a little trickery on both sides of the ball. They wanted to have Dimmel look like he was lead blocking, look like it was a quarterback run, and then try to do a little jump pass. UCLA covered that one well. Barnes back in on second and six. Next to the freshman quarterback, Skylar Thompson, a young offense for Kansas State. Barnes driving the legs. Wade with the tackle. He's about a yard short of the marker, third and short. Big third down here for UCLA. Kansas State starting to get in a rhythm, running the football with a big one by Barnes. Got to come out with a stop. They will run the football on this one, Jason, I'll bet you. Well, I'm not going to take that. It's third and one, and they're <laughs> rushing. trying to get defense. some easy money over here. Yeah, you can say it louder, but I'm still not taking the bet. Third down and one. They go straight up the middle for Dimmel, and he does have the first down. So the first man through, Winston Dimmel, whose father just took the UTEP head coaching job, Dana, gets a first down for Kansas State. You know what they call those fullbacks these days? Dinosaurs. I was, uh, there, there, there's his dad right there. Heck of an offensive coordinator will be taking the head job at UTEP. And I wouldn't be surprised, Winston Dimmel, his son, a graduate already, he might follow his dad over to UTEP. He'd be a valuable piece to plug into a new offense. Dana Dimmel upstairs in the booth for Kansas State as Thompson lets it rip and has a first down across the 40-yard line. Dominique Heath for 18. You watch Here's film Dana on Skyler Dimmel. Thompson. One thing he does so exceptionally well is throw outside the pocket. As a quarterback, you've got to be able to change your arm angle, throw from different platforms. When a young quarterback displays that, you know he's got a bright future. How rare is that for a freshman to be able to do that as skillfully as Thompson does right now? Well, it's innate. You can't really learn it. You either have it, Jason, or you don't, and he has it. That it factor you were talking about, part of that is throwing off platform, throwing outside the pocket. That's a natural ability. Thompson keeps, and he's tripped up a short game. See Thompson on the run. Yeah, and as a right-handed quarterback, what you're going to see is he going to get outside the pocket. His weight and his velocity and momentum are going towards the sideline, and he's got to drive the ball about 20 yards opposite his body. That's a tough throw to make. Not only tough to be accurate, tough to get the velocity you're used to, he does both exceptionally well. Freshmen don't do it very much under Bill Snyder, but he thinks that he's got a very good one in the future, Skylar Thompson. And as we mentioned, the question is, will Bill Snyder be on the sideline for the career of Skylar Thompson with a possible retirement? That's incomplete. Third down coming up as we check in with Olivia on Skylar Thompson. Well, guys, and Skylar going from the third string quarterback to starting the final three games, winning Big 12 Newcomer of the Week in the final two games. Everyone else was surprised. Well, Bill Snyder was not. He said he did not change his approach at all. He's always been a quality player, but most importantly, has good poise and processes information really quickly. Most importantly, even after that, guys, confidence, which is tough to get from a freshman. He's got a third down staring at him, the ninth play of the drive, third and six. And a 
flag comes in. False start, offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's on Nick Kaltmeyer, the right tackle, who's in for the injured Dalton Reisner, a first-team All-Big 12 tackle. Yeah, Kaltmeyer's talented. He really is. He's a big boy, 6'8", 280. So off the pass or, or, or speed rushers off the edge sometimes and give them problems. But if you notice right there what UCLA did, they called that radar or walk around. Nobody had their hand in the ground. They were kind of walking around before the snap, and that got Kansas State a little confused, and that's why you saw the penalty. So now third down 11 for Thompson. Young backing off. Thompson intercepted. Picked off by Darnay Holmes for UCLA. And really the first mistake we've seen from Skylar Thompson tonight. He's been stellar outside the pocket. Love to have this throwback. Just the third pick of the year for Skylar Thompson went right to Holmes, and the guy who got the ball is his former quarterback who's down. Be here from the folks at Chase Field and the bowl crew and footballs where helmets normally are for the Diamondbacks. UCLA back to the offense and they go with Jordan Lassley on a little end around for a gain of four. Well, they're going to count that one as a pass, but what I was just about to say is Devon Modster without a completion until that little touch pass, as they call it. We're going to see a couple of easy throws here. Jed Fish really needs to get him in rhythm, get some confidence to build off of. This is a run to Bolu Olorun Funmi, and he is taken down for a loss of five. Denzel Goolsby, the former wide receiver, made the stop. And Goolsby is safety. And this is something that I was, I was curious as well, is Kansas State, how do they play UCLA? Because UCLA likes throwing the football. But also, I think they know that they're somewhat limited in a different team passing the football without Josh Rosen. You're going to see Goolsby, Kendall Adams, both safeties for Kansas State playing more in the box. How different is UCLA offensively without Rosen? Extremely different. From a confidence standpoint, a mentality, pass concepts. Monster on third down goes over the middle, has a completion and a first down. It's Jordan Lassley across the 45. It's a gain of 18. And a fantastic catch here by Lastly. Third medium, usually want to get past the sticks, but a great job of Lastly of noticing that it's zone coverage, not continuing it. That's man, he's going to keep running zone. You sit up, show the quarterback your chest, and a great completion. Here's a pass to Christian Pabico, the walk-on receiver for UCLA. And Lastly and Pabico playing side by side. Christian Pabico is rather used to that. He played in high school with Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah, the former walk-on, actually still a walk-on. Got a ton of value in that slot position, runs a 4-5. He's quick, great understanding of leverage. No catches his first three years. Isn't that amazing? It's unreal. It's a type of thing that leads players to say, I'm going to go be a walk-on, see what happens. K-State has had great success with former walk-ons, and Pabico has here for UCLA. Get this, Jason. Only Division II and FCS offers out of high school. You said it, teammate of Juju Smith-Schuster. He was better than him when receiving yards and touchdowns and still no offers. Great chance for him to get on D1 here and having some success. This run play is going nowhere. Jade Kirby with the stop. And it's third down coming up for UCLA. Last on Pabico. I mean, it, here's a guy who at points was forcing Juju Smith-Schuster into his decoy. Yeah, absolutely. And nobody wanted him. Unbelievable. Now he's a guy that gets a lot of looks. He's versatile. Those slot receivers have to be able to do a lot. It's amazing that a walk-on goes to a slot receiver that's asked to do a ton in the pass game as well as the run game. You see him moving across the formation here. Third down, monster, and this is blown dead. 
Flag comes in. Ball start. Offense number 87. Five yard penalty. Third down. Some untimely penalties for young quarterbacks so far. Yeah, we've seen a few procedural things that that's, that's used to it. As we mentioned, Devon Monster did not even get all of the first team reps during these practices for bowl. Josh Rosen still in hopes that he would be playing tonight. Took a lot of first team reps. So as I mentioned, there's still going to be some growing in this game for this UCLA law offense in Devon Monster. Again, Rosen ruled out medically through the concussion protocol throughout the week. UCLA has converted a third and 11. Can they do it again? Monster to run, weaving his way across the 35, and he is going to be about a half yard short. Eli Walker with a big stick on Monster. And they're going to get to the ball and go for this one. QB sneak. There it goes, and a whistle before the snap. They're going to time out UCLA. So the Bruins burn a timeout. Jed Fish talks it over. Fourth and one, and a scoreless draw so far when we come back. What are your children passionate about? Open their eyes to a world that needs everyone's help. State, Iowa, and Boston College, another game in a baseball stadium, kind of like playing yourself, Iowa, B.C., and then Texas, Missouri, former rivals in conference. That's 9 Eastern Wednesday. That's coming up on ESPN tomorrow. Fourth down for UCLA. Monster, the pitch. And the initial hit didn't stop Felton. He reaches for the first down for UCLA. Boy, what a great second effort. I was up here trying to figure out what they were going to do. I was thinking they might go some kind of zone read, utilize Monster's mobility. Instead, they go speed option. And a great second effort for the first down. Demetric Felton actually took away from the offense in the first 12 games of the season. Two catches, negative two yards. He's been a focal point so far tonight as Ola Runfunmi is spun around and stopped at second down and long as Reggie Walker turned him around, the sophomore in his 23rd start. Demetric Felton for UCLA, helping to soften the blow of the loss of Darren Andrews a couple of weeks ago, lost for the year, one of the top receivers for the Bruins. Monster, the throwback to Colton Miller, the tackle, who is eligible, and that's going nowhere. He lost the ball out of bounds. Well, there's chicanery, then there's that, Jordan. <laughs> Jason, that, that's one of those things that sounds really good and looks really good in practice. You're going to see the backside tackle will be the one that's going to end up getting the ball here. Going to bluff the block, let the guys run by. One of those ones that Colton Miller, number 77 there, he's been drooling about. He's been hanging on Jed Fish. Hey, it's a ball game. Let me get a catch. <laughs> it's going to work. We're going to go for a touchdown. And then reality hits, and you're in third and 13. Saw that fake punt earlier in the game just before us. Monster on the run, trying to get some yardage to set up a fourth down if they want to go for it. But they do have a very talented kicker in J.J. Molson, who they likely will bring out. Yeah, previously on that fourth down here at the 31 yard line, it's a longer field goal. Not completely out of range, but I understand going for it here. Get the points, take the lead, let your defense continue to play well. So the eighth generation descendant of the man who found fame in the Molson Brewery in 1786. He is part of that Molson family, JJ, from 42 absolutely drills it to give UCLA the lead. Well, if you're 14 minutes in and you're UCLA down your coach, down your quarterback, this isn't so bad. Not at all. Not at all. All right, some hot topics around college football brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Rashad Penny, five straight games now, 200-plus yards. Kyle Whittingham gets the win for Utah again, but the question that really centers around this game is 
Josh Allen, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. Which quarterback do you like and what are the differences? Well, I'll tell you what, this guy right here, Josh Allen, probably has the biggest arm out of anybody in the country and one of the biggest arms I've ever been around personally. So he is uberly talented. His ceiling is really high. But the most polished quarterback and the most NFL-ready quarterback right now, without a doubt in my mind and a lot of NFL scouts, is Josh Rosen. Why? Accuracy. And I was talking to Jed Fish, who actually I played for in Jacksonville. I know Jed Fish well. He said a high school, high school quarterback can hit a door. College quarterback, they can hit the doorknob. NFL quarterback, they'll throw it through the keyhole. He said Josh can throw it in the keyhole, turn the, turn the knob, and open the door all at the same time. Unbelievable accuracy. You tie that in with his arm strengths and tangible, intangibles. He's ready for the next level. Doesn't seem like it would fit in the, so he manipulates the ball a little bit too, which <laughs> yeah, is magical. <laughs> Sounds good. Paints a good picture. Pringle takes it out of the end zone. A dangerous kick return unit. And Pringle is driven back across the 20-yard line. So the big three, a little fisticuffs again. Last time these two teams saw each other in a bowl game, there was some handshake struggling, let's say, in the post game. And now they're separated on the field. Hey, these guys had to be away from their families on Christmas. They've been waiting four weeks to hit somebody else. <laughs> They're a little cranky, you're saying. So Todd McShay's quarterback prospects, one, two, three, Rosen, Darnold, Allen. What do yeah. you get out of the three of them? Well, I think Darnold is an extremely talented passer as well. I think from a mental makeup standpoint, a competitive nature, an it factor, I think he's the best uh, when it comes to that. But the most polished, the most talented, the most well-rounded is Josh Rosen. And Josh Allen's a wild card. Wyoming, really tough to evaluate with the talent he plays with and against. It's going to be an interesting project for a team to grab and grow. Josh Rosen, very thoughtful quarterback, very cerebral quarterback, watching as his defense gets gashed by Justin Sillman for a medium gain on first down. But on Josh Allen, too, one of Rosen's combatants for that number one quarterback spot. He had a very nice game out in Boise in the bowl game a couple of days ago. Showed great arm talent. Absolutely. I mean, and, and that's the thing. The arm talent is unquestionable. Uh, he's, he's got more arm talent than Josh Rosen. It's the consistency. And that's something I've been wanting to see from Josh Rosen as well. More consistency. But then again, he's had three offensive coordinators in three years. So you can kind of understand that right now. Both talented. New quarterback in for Kansas State. Alex Delton replaces Skylar Thompson late in the first quarter for the final play of this first quarter. And Delton has a big run. Dimmel along with him. Delton running away from the Bruins. Touchdown. And a flag on the tackle in the end zone. What a first play for that young man. This is why they're happy that Alex Delton is healthy. As good of an athlete as Skylar Thompson is, Alex Delton is a runner. And this is what he does. And this is the element that two quarterbacks can bring to you in a system when they have different After the strengths. Across the goal line, personal foul, horse collar tackle on the defense. 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The quarter ended on that play. We will have the try for point. The first in-state quarterback to start for Bill Snyder since Dylan Meyer in 2004, Alex Delton, with the 68-yard touchdown on his first play. Matthew McCrane's extra point is good. Football's a simple game. It's just a quarterback power. You got a physical quarterback, you pull a guard. Give him a chance to get to the second level, but really the backside block to free. Alex Delton was what sprung him. Then you finish with the speed. And there's Kansas State running the football. Evening 7-3, Kansas State with the lead. Jason Benetti, Jordan Rogers, Olivia Harlan along with you. And Alex Delton checks into the game and then runs away with his career-long a 68-yard rushing touchdown to give Kansas State the lead. Got a feeling that's not the last we're going to see him. Had 142 yards against Oklahoma earlier in the season. Now that he's healthy, 
going to see a heavy dose of both quarterbacks, I think, moving forward. And on the touchdown, he was horse collared in the end zone, so the kickoff comes from the 50 yard line. And they kick it back to the two. And Darnay Holmes, who had the interception earlier, he's inside the 15 there. Let's look at the touchdown. Like I said, it's just a quarterback power. They're going to pull the center and the play side guard to lead block for Alex Delton. But the key block, look at this. That's your backup tackle, Nick Kaltmeyer. Seal in the backside linebacker. That's what you got to do. That makes the entire run. If not, it's a great five yard gain. That backside run in conjunction with the receiver, Byron Pringle on the backside, that's what sprung Alex Delton. It's a team sport. You got to have all 11 guys on board, Jason, if you're going to have a play like that. How about how long Pringle was engaged with that block? That's not easy to do. You know how much space is out there for those receivers? Brandon Stevens in a tailback, and he is drilled by Elijah Sullivan, the sophomore linebacker for Kansas State. He's been the special teams maven for them there. Defensively, makes the stop. And a sizable K-State crowd here. Yeah, they got loud there. I'll tell you what. Always a big traveling party as this one goes to the outside. And Jordan, lastly, a flag has come in. And it's against UCLA. Jordan to run, illegal block in the back, number 77. Half the distance to the goal penalty, second down. We got his catch earlier. There he's got the flag on him, Colton Miller. You're going to see on the left side of your screen here. This is tough. This is tough for an offensive lineman. Getting out in space is not what they're best at. What they're taught to do here is throw. He did the right thing. You're supposed to dive at these linebackers and secondary guys to get them off their feet. Just tried to chase him. Can't chase a guy, you're going to end up hitting him in the back. So second and 17 for UCLA. Monster high on the sideline, and lastly reels it in beautifully. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what, this is what makes Jordan Lastly special, and a reason that NFL scouts are considering where they might pick this guy, even though he won't blow you away with his speed. He makes plays like this. Three double-figure catch games for Lastly, and a whistle before this snap. The ruling on the field is to complete a pass. The play is under review. I think we both think that's a catch, right? Looked like it to me. But hey, I'm a biased quarterback. Remember, it always is a catch. Oh, I'll remember for a long time, yeah. This is a catch, right? Oh, yeah. As long as he had control. Very long and rightfully so on the catch for Lastly. Yeah, not at all. Very clear. This one, I'd, I'd like to say the booth should just let that ref down on the field, who's got a much better angle than even we have from the booth call that one and not break up the pace of play we've seen plays stopped for much more than that and other plays not stopped for more than that this year but lastly 142 yards a game that would be a school record if he maintains it through the bowl game past Freddie Mitchell UCLA on the ground for a first down Olivia Guys, Jordan Lastly was telling me that when Josh Rosen is out there, he just has ice through his veins. He has this calming aura. Everyone trusts him. But Devon Monster is a little bit less commanding in the huddle. So Lastly tells him, look, this is your huddle now. Josh isn't out here. you got to take command here. This throw is on target for Theo Howard. What did your receivers say about you? Well, I, I don't huddle. think I ever lacked the confidence. I maybe lacked the skill set that came along with the confidence I brought. But oh, come on. That's the thing. I mean, as a quarterback, it's tough. You're following Josh Rosen. I mean, th there's reason that you go into a huddle and your head's not as high as maybe he holds his. But the more he makes throws like we just saw to Jordan Lastly, the more completions he gets, the more confident he'll play, the more outspoken he'll be in the huddle. How long does that process take if you're a monster, especially after following a guy like Rosen? Jason, it can take a play. One play. It really can. It can take a play. It can. But you don't want to be faking it. But to some degree, you got to set the tone for your team, and you learn that early as a quarterback. 
Quick set, Theo Howard again shakes one tackle, but not the second one from Eli Walker, the safety. So second down and short for UCLA. Jetfish calling a really good game right now after a few adjustments in the first drives. We saw the catch by Lastly on the sidelines. That was an easy high-low read. That's what we call a trigger read for a quarterback. Doesn't have to read a whole field. He's reading one defender and a nice easy hitch throw there to get another completion. Oler and Fundme fell down after running into Turan, his left guard. You work with Jed Fish. What's he like as a quarterback guru? Guru, as a guru, he's a tinkerer. He loves to have his hands on. He wants to figure out what part of the mechanics, what part of your lower body, how can you get more velocity, how can we clean up the intricacies of the game. He loves to have his hands on and treats you like you're a ball of putty, and he's going to mold you. Seven straight completions now for Monster. This is Jordan Leslie escaping the defense for a touchdown. That'll build the confidence, 52 yards. You know who we were talking about earlier, Jason? A guy named Christian Pabico, number 17. He didn't just catch that touchdown, but he's the reason that one broke for a touchdown. A great block on the outside, an easy throw. And once again, Jed Fish is setting up Devon Monster to make easy completions, allow his playmakers to do the rest. Ola run fund me, by the way, is going to have to be careful. He was right at the edge of the sideline with his helmet off for a pretty epic celebration for UCLA. Watch this block by a current walk-on, Christian Pabico. He'll do it all. He'll catch it, and he'll also dive and lay his body on the line to spring his buddy for a long and much-needed answer by UCLA and Devon Modster. There are two ways to protect. And that's who he is as an offensive guru. He maximizes the skill set of what he has. And I think that's what he's doing tonight. He's taking a few notes. You better believe it. He's looking at a few guys and saying, here's, I, think I can change a few things. And, and here's what I can do with this guy or that guy. Saw Jed Fish on the sideline. He certainly is a big part of what UCLA has done already offensively in terms of growth this year up to about 34 points a game. But Chip Kelly has hired a couple of assistants. And as you said, is watching tonight as Kansas State gets it back with DJ Reed. Finding his way to the edge, Reed finally stalls out just short of the 30 yard line. With this new early signing period, new coaches are going to come in earlier, it seems, and Chip Kelly here is his current class. Yeah, it's maybe not the headline that UCLA fans wanted to see. No five stars yet, handful of four stars. They're still figuring out who they need. And that's why I said this is as much an evaluative process for Chip Kelly watching this bowl game to figure out who else they need to go get. So what's he watching in game tonight? I think he's evaluating. He's evaluating Devon Modster, seeing what he can build or if, if he'll fit into the system. But the reason Chip Kelly's successful, because it's not here's what we're doing, this is what always works. It's how can I adapt to what I do to fit the players that I have and the skill sets that they possess. That's what makes him special. Defense certainly could get shored up some after something of a rough season, especially against the run. Skyler Thompson back in. He dumps it off to Silman. I, I liked what Caleb Wilson on the UCLA sideline said when uh, Chip Kelly was hired. He said, I better get my cardio up. <laughs> That's true. Tell you what, you won't have to worry about that. That's one of the things that Chip Kelly forces you almost to do is you'll, you'll have a GPS tracker. He'll know how much hours you slept the night before. I mean, they track so much data to figure out how to maximize these players. He did it at Philadelphia, had teammates that played for him. Big on recovery, big on making sure that guys are rested and recovered so they can play at their best. Making a foray back into the Pac-12 after such success at Oregon. Skyler Thompson has it batted away, so third down coming up. And look, if you're Chip Kelly, you would think at some point everybody knows who you are. He's wearing his name tag tonight, right? He's in the athletic director's booth. Hi, I'm Chip. Yeah, I think everybody knows who you are, Chip. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, I did, you know. It's like the Seinfeld episode where Kramer tries to get everybody to wear name tags. So they talk to each other in the lobby. I think they know Chip by face. 
most of these fans will very soon if they don't. So tops in the entire series after the Delton touchdown run. Thompson off the spin, can't keep his feet. Boss Tagaloa was in there, caving in the pocket, fourth down. And really that right there, that's a coverage sack. That's a great job by the secondary of UCLA to cover all the options that Kansas State wanted to hit downfield. And Thompson just ran out of time. And the injured party for Kansas State is the left tackle, Scott France, who started all 26 games in his career. So they're without the right tackle, Dalton Reisner, and they're without the left tackle, France, for the moment. There's Reisner, the first-team All-Big 12 player with the shoulder injury. Yeah, he's really been playing with a shoulder injury for a long time. And if you look at this offensive line, their strength was, <laughs> now that France down as well, the tackles. So this is concerning. You're already down your starting right tackle, your left tackle now in jeopardy, and you're struggling to pass the ball. Scott France is an interesting guy and a very honest guy and, and a great story. Olivia, right? Yeah, Jason, he made history as just the second active, openly gay college football player. He told his teammates before his family guys, this was two years ago in a team building activity, player only meeting. The secret was kept all that time until he was ready to go public about it. Scott said he'd always struggled with who he was, being afraid and angry with who he was, but that day changed everything. He says he's never felt more loved or accepted. And you see him talk about it and you hear what he has to say about it. It's just a beautiful story of what sports can mean to a player. And you know who the first guy to come up to him and give him a hug was? His running back, Alex Barnes. There's a special relationship you have with the guys in the locker room. And, and one reason that it's not the first time we've heard of a player coming out to his, his teammates, his, his football family, before maybe even his normal family. Uh, that's the type of relationships you have. And to add on to that story, that happened in 2015. Yeah. And it's just started this summer to catch some traction, which means these teammates not only respect him and love him, but they keep it private as much as he wants to as well. You think about that moment and to have the feeling and the level of comfort in the that room to be able shoulders, to do that. I imagine. Yeah. A great story for Kansas State as they will run. And a good player. Hopefully, we'll find some more out about what happened to him there. And they need him back in this game. Came off the field pretty easily. So the hope would be that he could get back in as he is in the huddle with the offensive line over on the sideline. Some of those offensive linemen want some TV time sometimes. Some of the guys I played with, hey, I'm going to take a knee on this one. Mom wanted to see a little more camera time. All right, so after second and eight, I'm going to ask you to bury somebody. Monster play action. Deep ball down the middle. Theo Howard. It's a bullseye for a touchdown. That is what we call a dime, Jason. And one of the things that Jed Fish mentioned was the strongest part of Monster's game, his deep ball. And the arc and the touch that he put on that, and still it was 45, 50, 55 yards downfield. That is a heck of a throw. And Chip Kelly right now may be taking some notes. Hey, we'll keep that one in the playbook. Trying to cool him off over on the sideline on a 70-yard target hit from Monster. Hey, I told you, sometimes it only takes one play. Extra point for Molson is good. 10-point lead for UCLA. And taking a page out of Josh Rosen's book, he was so good at the play action, at folding the defense. You see here with the play action, and then it's the touch, the accuracy downfield. Finds Howard running wide open, sometimes over the toughest, delivered it perfectly. The college football playoff semifinals, New Year's Day on ESP. Come on, I'm awful. Yeah, I'm worse, really bad. buddy. How do they keep that cold? Uh, I, I'm not going to find out. Uh, more bowls coming up Thursday. Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. Navy's in that one. Virginia Tech down a couple of starters offensively against Oklahoma State. And then Stanford TCU in the Valero Alamo Bowl.
game that UCLA and Kansas State got together for a couple of years ago. All the games available on the ESPN app as well. UCLA up 10 in the second quarter. DJ Reed for Kansas State finds a seam across the 35. Mossy Johnson just got to him. Well, Jed Fish has done a great job of managing Devon Modster, short, easy throws, but just when the defense is getting lulled to sleep, a little play action, and that's the one thing he said he does best, the touch. I tell you what, Jason, I said it earlier, sometimes those wide open throws are the ones that are the hardest. You try not to overthrow them, you end up underthrowing them right on the money on that one. And it's interesting, maybe, just maybe, there's been some learning of play action from Josh Rosen. That was one thing that Jed Fish talked about as one of Rosen's specialties and Monster with very nice play action that time. The Monster's in that film room, too. They watch a ton of Matt Ryan, Tom Brady perfecting the play action. Kansas State hasn't had much out of the conventional run game. The 68-yard rush for Delton got him the touchdown. I don't know why he's not back in, honestly. They're struggling throwing the football right now. A little banged up on the outside already with Nick Kultmeyer at right tackle. They need to run the football. And, and when you have a quarterback that can run as good as Alex Delton can, you add an extra blocker to the point of attack. Good news is that France is back in on the line for Kansas State after being injured on third down the last possession. Thompson steps up, climbing the pocket, and gets bashed. Third down coming up. Great job in the secondary there. They tried to get up the middle of the field, attacking a too high safety. Wasn't there. Thompson had to step up in the pocket. So here it's one high. They roll down. What they're trying to do is attack the middle of the field here with Zach Reuter. Linebackers drop right into the right gap in the rush with four, which they haven't done a ton of, were able to hit home. And Odigi Zua stayed with the play to take him down. So third and seven, Kansas State. Thompson flushed out again. Tried to turn it upfield, and Jacob Tuioti Mariner was the one that shortened the field for him. Fourth down, and UCLA's defense, and Tom Bradley's playing very well so far. You know what they're doing is they're getting pressure with their front four, something that they have not been able to do at times to get pressure. They've had to bring five or six, bring the blitz. Their front four is playing really well right now. That's the third three and out in five drives for Kansas State. Didn't expect that tonight. Get that running quarterback back in. Nice punt by Nick Walsh to force the fair catch. And here's how UCLA's season has gone. Mentioned they're under new management, 6-6, six 4-5 and six, four and five in the Pac-12. The big win over Texas A&M, which changed the course of Kevin Sum uh, Sumlin's tenure with the Aggies. Couldn't win on the road, though. Haven't won on the road the last two years other than one game. So Jim Mora fired after the loss on the road against USC. And then Molson just snuck him into the bowl game with that field goal against Cal leading to Chip Kelly hired as the head coach. And he continues to watch from a sweep here at Chase Field. Monster. Put it on target again to the 30 in Jordan Wilson. That's a heck of a throw right there. I was just about to say, I hope they don't come out and start to get conservative, allow Monster to continue to develop, give him some leash. Easy play action, your tight ends on a corner route. Great throw with, again, perfect display of touch. Nine straight completions for Devon Monster with his future head coach watching here in Phoenix. Ola run fund me up the middle for a short game. You can see another little play action here. And watch just the arc of this throw. There's linebackers underneath, so you got to get it just high enough to miss the outstretched hands. But you see the safeties. It's got to have just enough velocity to get there on time as well. It's a level two ball, we call it. And it's not an easy throw. Theo Howard in the short game as well. Level two ball meaning what? Well, level, th level three would be that touchdown throw. A lot of arc. Level one would be a rip. 
right? A hitch route, something you're throwing with a lot of velocity. Level two means you got to get it up and down very quickly, which means it's got to have enough touch with enough velocity to get up and down over the second level, but underneath or quick enough to get there so the safeties don't intercept. Level two, one, two, and three. Football's easy, Jason, I told you. It sure is. You only got to make three throws. If you can make a level one, two, and three, you're in the NFL. I'm there, just kidding. There are kids that are like five years old saying, <laughs> Dad, give me a ball. I can do level one, two, and three. Let's go. Monster stepping up to whip it out of bounds, and that was his decision, so it breaks the completion streak, but not in an ugly way. Ten in a row going by the wayside. Tell you what, the reason Jed Fish is, is going to have another opportunity to be an offensive coordinator, uh, possibly a head coach at some point, he's going to get some looks, is because he can develop quarterbacks. You saw what he did with his offense, taking him from over 90 in the country to top 20 from last year to this year. You saw how he developed Rosen, refined some of his game. Now you're seeing with Monster, the adjustments. Good coaches make adjustments. Early in the game he struggled, now he's on a roll. Well, part of the way he tried to get into coaching Jed Fish is by putting notes on Steve Spurrier's car window underneath the windshield wiper. He was trying to get on staff or just into the building in Gainesville when he was there. He went as far to put a 36-page manual on how to handle quarterbacks under the windshield wiper of Spurrier's car. You could break a wiper by just doing Just a subtle that. hint, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just a quick little note for you. He's a grinder. He loves the game. He's fun to sit in a meeting room with. He also yells at you a little bit, but a little intense, yeah. right? Yeah, it's okay, though. Monster has it popped in the air and incomplete. It fell behind Quessenberry, the center, and it's fourth down. And a great job on the outside by Bronson Massey, number 90 there, de defensive end. Expands with the back, and then what you're taught, if you're not going to hit home, get your hands up. Flintoft. DJ Reed puts it on the ground and flops on top of it. When we come back, we're going to find out exactly how intense Jed Fish is in a meeting room. You're going to tell us because you were in there as UCLA nearly got it with a short field. Well, Jordan, you said that we might see the other quarterback for Kansas State. Jed Fish has his defense set up well. Kansas State deep in its own end, but Alex Delton is back in for Kansas State from the seven. Alex Barnes on the run. So we were talking before the break about Jed Fish. You were with him a couple of years ago in the NFL, and you said the meeting room was a little bit intense. Yeah. How so? As a rookie quarterback in 2013, I'm, I'm frantically trying to take notes in a meeting room and figure out what this offense is, and he'll just casually fire some out. Hey, what's the X receiver got here? Hey, what, what coverage is this? And between taking notes and looking up, he gave you about a second and a half. If you didn't have an answer, he'd yell, sack, sack and move on. You never had a chance to operate, or never had a chance to, to answer the question. He wants you to operate quickly, have answers quickly, because that's what you got to do on the field. Delton on the run. He finds a crease again, a little hesitation to get by Young, and then finally wiped out across the 20. And Alex Delton's a running back. He can throw the football too, but this is a broken play. There's nothing here. The direction he wants to go is covered. He cuts back, makes something out of nothing. That's why he's back in the game. He can create. That's what Kansas State needs right now. The big game against Oklahoma, 142 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. So Skyler Thompson on the sideline. Dimmel leads him this time, and Delton 
It is hit for the second time in a row by Metters. So during Bowl Mania, the ESPN app is your absolute best friend. Every ESPN and ABC Bowl game live, at home, on the go, wherever you may be. You can do it while you're in the crowd wearing a winter hat, while you're wearing Kansas State gear, wherever you might be, on the sideline while shooting the game. That's probably not great for his career. <laughs> Download the app now. He's got the big camera using the phone. <laughs> You can see they're going check with me here. That means they're going to line up, see what UCLA lines up in, and change the play. Should be a run to the right here. It is a whistle first. No play. Each team with two timeouts before that one. Before the snap, timeout was called. Kansas State, 30-second timeout. Their second time out of the half. You wouldn't imagine they would need that timeout, but we shall see. As UCLA leads by 10, Kansas State got the Delton touchdown to take the lead, but it's been all UCLA after that. Yeah, and Delton's limited time. He's been dynamic. Every time he touches the ball, he can make something happen. So I expect if I was the offensive coordinator, I'm riding him as much as possible than what Jed Fish has been able to do down the stretch and managing this offense has been something special. They're on a roll. Play actions mixed in with short throws. Well, you said it early, build the confidence. Yeah. Get some positivity thrust into your quarterback monster, and then he's got the ability to hit that pinhole on the touchdown. Yeah, it started 0 for 3, got him some easy throws, made some adjustments in the schemes that they wanted to run. And we've seen nothing but a confident modster moving forward and a successful UCLA offense since that point. UCLA gets the ball after halftime, so a big drive for Kansas State. Late first half. Delton to throw down the middle, and it's batted away. Incomplete. It's Kenny Young. In his final game for UCLA, he wears Jackie Robinson's number. It will be retired after this game. And here, he got his hands up to bat it. And he's been a bright spot of this defense. 44 stops in the last four games against the run, but this is what makes him a special player and why he's the best player on this defense is he's about 25 yards downfield in coverage and breaks that one up. You saw the number retired. Every major league team retired that number. And Kenny Young wearing 42 with great pride. He says it's part of the reason he gets up out of bed and works as hard as he does to show how important it is to him. Delton had a rusher at his feet. Needs to get to the 33 and got there and then some first down Kansas State. And again, great coverage downfield by UCLA. This secondary is playing really well. There's not the lanes that Kansas State is expecting downfield, but this is why you have Alex Delton in. Skyler Thompson, he can make plays on the outside as well, but Alex Delton is a dangerous physical runner. Thompson, the freshman, Delton, the sophomore, both scheduled to be back. Jesse Ertz with the knee injury earlier this year, so three quarterbacks have taken snaps. Delton to run again, finds the crease so well. And he'll be about a yard short. And this is what I mean by running with the quarterback. You see Alex Barnes is used to getting the ball handed to him, but now he's a lead blocker. So now you have an extra hat or an extra blocker against a defense that creates an advantage. That's why running quarterbacks are so dangerous. Juggle on the snap, and Barnes is stood up and dropped. Chigose Anaruka, the redshirt sophomore on a Sacramento, busted in. And a missed assignment there by the left guard, Abdul Beecham. So probably blocked that guy. You know, Tui Oti Mariner is a guy that he's playing defensive end at 285 right now. Delton finds his way outside for a first down Kansas State. So shifty. Alex Delton, the sophomore. As I mentioned, Jacob Tuioti Mariner, he's 285 pounds. Right now, he plays a four-down defensive end. Chip Kelly just hired a new defensive coordinator, Jerry 
as an RO, and he's going to bring a 3-4. So it'll play better to the skill set and to the size that UCLA has on defense. So it'll be interesting to see how that transition takes shape next year and, and really how Chip Kelly's evaluating this defense and, and guys out of position. The transition has actually started for Tom Bradley's staff for UCLA because of rules on limits on assistant coaches. They had to drop two of their full-time assistants because Chip Kelly brought in a couple of his own. They're not coaching in this game, so Dalton Hilliard and Kyle Weiss have been moved up from their GA position as Chip Kelly watches on and maybe downloads the ESPN app, although you'd imagine he was in our employee, he'd probably have it by now. Isn't that amazing? You got your defense coordinator in a booth. You got Angus McClure, the defensive line coach, down the field with some GAs. And they're playing well. Delton rips it downfield and some contact with Wadu. And no flag comes in on the contact with Zuber. I know I'm an offensive guy, Jason, but that one. I think could have been a flag. Ball wasn't perfectly on target. And that's why. As he's got some pressure on him. Not perfectly on target, but... Oh, actually, now that I look at it, I think that might be a good no call. You see, Wadu comes over the top, doesn't really make significant contact. And now I show my bias again. Well, you just show that you're a waffler now. <laughs> Delton to throw, snaps it off in the flat for Barnes, and that's a beautiful tackle by Metters to set up third down. One time out for K-State, 30 seconds of the clock moving. And now timeout Kansas State at the 30-second mark. You know, always uses his timeouts properly. Adnan Burke, Adnan. I try to be judicious, JB. Coming up in the Mercedes-Benz half to report, Emmanuel Acho, Jonathan Vilma, and me, as we'll show you highlights of Utah dominating. Also, Duke played very well today. And also, jumping ship, James Harrison going from the Steelers to the Patriots. Also, JB, I love the Seinfeld reference earlier. See if he can work in the contest. Back to you and Jordan. <laughs> I think I'm going to lose that contest, Adnan. Thank you for asking, though. All right, so 32 seconds on the clock. They've added two seconds, third down and nine. And Kansas State, the offense has mostly been Delton. The leading receiver is a tie for first with one catch each for four separate players. The pass game's not been there so far. No, they've been stagnant. You're going to have to throw the ball here in close to third and ten. Got four receivers, one running back. Going to try to attack the middle of this field as right now UCLA's got two safeties. Weak spots in the middle. And UCLA will use a timeout. So Jed Fish, who has wanted for so long to be a head coach and has been preparing for so long to be a head coach that he actually has a journal of ideas that he's kept for the last decade plus that says on the front of it, when I become a head coach. He's, he's been in so many different rooms with so many big name coaches that he figured it's time to start collecting for this very moment. Yeah, as a head coach, you, you, you take a little bit from, from every guy you've worked with or worked under and, and you build your own identity. So he's got a whole book now of the way he wants to run practice, the way he wants to do the off season workouts, the way he wants to run academics and study hall and all the things that you don't think about. That's what he said. He said, I, I didn't think I'd be picking out where our wives would be sitting. So I'm trying to coach football. That's being a head coach. But that is a nice chair to be in. You get to pick the pregame meal. That's true. No. That's true. Pizza for me. Really? Keep it simple. Greasy. You have every choice of any food and you pick pizza. I'm a simple man. Uh-huh. Third and nine for Kansas State. No timeouts remaining. Still in a two shell. I imagine they're going to try to attack the middle. Two EOT Mariner is there to collapse on Delton. So that may be it for this drive for Kansas State, unless they want to go for it on fourth down, which would be a strange choice. You know, I don't mind the call there. You want to burn a timeout if you're UCLA or no? No, nah, I wouldn't right now. I like where we're at. We're up 10. If for UCLA, you're thinking we're up 10. Let's go to half with the confidence, make some more corrections, and come out, and we get the ball too. Pretty sterling job in the first half by your former coach to get Monster up and running offensively, don't you think? Yeah, he's been stellar. Uh, the game plan, the adjustments that Jed Fish has made are why they're up 10 right now. And we will hear from Jed Fish with Olivia 
But first, we go to the studio for the halftime report. UCLA leads by 10. Adnan. All right, JB, thank you very much. Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Surprise leader in the first half, 17 to 7 here in Phoenix at Chase Field, the home of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Jason Benetti, Jordan Rogers, Olivia Harlan is downstairs. Look, UCLA found out about half an hour before the game they're going to be without Josh Rosen. Devon Monster takes over. Slow start, but he really turned it up. Yeah, Jed Fish adapted this offense. Started out 0 for 3, and they started mixing in some quick passing game. Allow him to get some co completions. More importantly, get some confidence. And what you do, you got to make all three throws, as I said earlier. The level 1 throw, the gimme with a little bit of velocity. Now to the level 2 throw. It's got to have velocity, but it's also got to have some touch. Get it up and down. He excelled at that. And then, you want to get your name in the paper? you got to complete the level 3 ball, the deep one, the sexy throw. And he hit a wide open receiver there for a big time touchdown. The confidence that he's playing with is a direct result of how Jed Fish is allowing him to take easy, easy throws and mix in the shots. Maybe the most interesting part of this look at the stats is the fact that Skylar Thompson isn't the quarterback shown for Kansas State. Delton had the big rushing first half. Skylar Thompson hit the bench for the bulk of the second half. Yeah, and Delton's the one that's, he's been the playmaker. Thompson struggled, but really what they need to do, they need to get their playmakers involved. They have two receivers, Isaiah Zuber and Byron Pringle, who are talented. They've taken shots downfield that have not been there. The protection hasn't held up. Take a page out of Jed Fish with some nice, quick, easy throws and get these quarterbacks, whether it is Delton or Thompson, in rhythm. That's what Fish did for Monster. He completed 10 in a row and route to 10 for 15 for 215 and a couple of scores. And he's, in some way at least, auditioning for his spot for next season with Chip Kelly, the incoming head coach. Yeah, it's one thing to be able to develop and groom and excel with a talented quarterback like Josh Rosen. It's another thing to not really know who's going to play up until maybe minutes before the game and start to develop and groom a young quarterback that hasn't played a lot of football. Monster, the screen, Ola run fun me. Uh, across the 25, and he'll be a, about a yard and a half short of that first down marker. And for Monster, uh, there was some growing pain as well, just in terms of what he was doing offensively at UCLA. He had never been under center in high school at Tesoro High School, and here he's very comfortable out of the shotgun with the quick throw to the outside for Theo Howard across the 35, and UCLA's humming offensively. That's a key screen. That's what they call that. It's really a run pass option when the box is stacked and you want to run the ball. That's a built in throw and it is made by the block there by Christian Pabico. We saw the big touchdown earlier with Pabico in a block. It's a great easy completion. Ola run fun me the junior who lost his father a couple of years ago. His dad Peter died of liver cancer. And Bolu keeps the last voicemail that his father ever sent him on his phone and has basically memorized it and playing hard here tonight to set up third down. The guy that really changed his body in the offseason, dropped his body down to about 9% body fat. You see him limp off, but he's been faster, more agile. We've seen the success he had this year. Hopefully he's all right. Third down and two. Ola run fund me out. Brandon Stevens is stacked up by the run stuffer Will Geary for Kansas State. Well, and UCLA is keeping their offense out there. Just about to say it's a great job getting off the field, but let's see if UCLA actually snaps this or they're going to try to get Kansas State to jump and they go. Monster quick throw to the outside, and this is going to be very close. Kirby the tackle on Howard, and he looks like he's right at the stick. It's going to be a UCLA first down. You know what? I love the call, and I love the call because of the tempo. You got to make a quick decision. You got to catch the defense off guard, and that is as close as you're going to get. You can make the argument that should be stopped and reviewed yeah, and here. they will.
Well, you said it earlier. Jed Fish in the meeting room gave you about a second and a half to make a decision. He just did right there. Quick trigger for fourth down. And fourth even question the first place, but that spot was nearly spot on. And, I mean, can you move the ball back an inch? I don't know. I think that's a good call to let that play stand. There's not enough evidence to overturn it. It is stands rather than overturned or confirmed, so not enough evidence to overturn. First down, UCLA out of the timeout and the review. And our first look at Soso Jamabo, who is in for the injured Ola Runfunmi. Monster off play action. Another deep ball. Lastly, trying to run under it. And DJ Reed was closest. Second down. I like the idea. I like the shot. Good job giving your guy a chance and throwing it up. The receiver was just unable to get on top of the defender there. He ends up running a post and getting inside and not quite on the same page there. But I like the shot. First down. You just had a big fourth down. Take an opportunity. You still got three downs to get 10 yards here. Two downs. Unless you're going to go for it every four. Well, I mean, that guy made the choice. <laughs> he might. Jed Fish, the interim head coach for UCLA. Jamabo is strung out by Kirby and the Cavalry for Kansas State. Now third and long. Jade Kirby in there mixing it up. He's got ten and a half tackles for loss, and the reason he has that many this year, he's got great instincts. You see coming over and fighting over the top of a few blocks, runs right past the lead blocker and straight to the running back. UCLA has got a third and 11 here. Grew up on a ranch, Kirby did, as he says, roping calves and throwing down steers. So tackling's That's harder than tackling. Yeah, I was going to say, that makes tackling really easy. Monster, sideline, dropped. Eldridge Massington couldn't turn around and make the grab. And that's where you miss the accuracy of Josh Rosen. You have the leverage, you have the routes, just a simple out route or a little short comeback to the outside and that ball, Monster's gonna want that one back. Left that inside, should have had a completion for a first down. Saw Rosen, one of the first ones to greet him over on the sideline. And Flintoff, who's had a nice night, sends this one out of bounds. Friday, 8.30 Eastern, the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. One of those quarterbacks that we talked about earlier, Sam Darnold and USC, number eight in the country against Ohio State. Eighth time they've met in a bowl game. And we'll see if this is the last game for Sam Darnold. Likely so, you compared the quarterbacks earlier. And the quarterback that will play now for Kansas State is Alex Delton as Rosen talks it over with Monster on the sideline. Yeah, what a resource there. Look at that. That's leadership. You may not be able to play, but you can still provide some input, some coaching tips for a young quarterback and a, and a coaching staff that's a little thin right now. Alex Barnes is dropped by Anna Ruka, the red shirt sophomore. Again, you mentioned the thin UCLA coaching staff, Dalton Hilliard and Kyle Weiss, the GAs elevated to assistance for this game for UCLA because of rules involving the new head coach, Chip Kelly, hiring his own assistants. They're not coaching the game. So Hilliard and Weiss end up as legitimate coaches for UCLA on the sideline in this bowl game. Reverse for Zuber, and Isaiah Zuber cuts it back inside. What a run for Zuber. Barnes got a block for him, and Zuber is down at the 35. And what I say, you got playmakers, you got to find ways to get them the ball, whether it's short passes or whether it's a reverse, little window dressing, get your playmakers the ball, because this is what can happen. Zuber's an unbelievable athlete, gets to the edge, and this is all playmaker. Makes Darius Pickett miss, cuts back across field. That's a spark. More than anything, yeah, it's yards and you change field position, but that's a spark that Kansas State desperately needed on offense. 
You have Dimmel out in front there, and then Barnes picks up the block right there. Another great block there by Barnes. I mean, what we say earlier, it's a team effort. Have big plays like that running the football, you got to have a couple big blocks downfield. UCLA has an injured player. It's the linebacker, Keyshawn Lucier South, the former defensive end who came into the game with 24 tackles in his last four. He had gotten hot defensively late this season, but he is dinged up for the moment. Well, he got hot because he was finally in one spot for yeah. the entire time. They moved him from Razor linebacker to DN to weak side linebacker and kind of found his home there at weak side linebacker. He's been playing better. Kansas State so far tonight has 231 yards. 203 of those are on the ground. So you said early part of your keys were keep Kansas State under 200 yards on the ground. That That's ain't going to happen. It's the big plays. Yeah. You can't give up two chunk plays like that in the running game. Look at the space down here at the bottom of your screen. UCLA is playing way off right now. Those easy throws that we saw Monster completing. If I'm looking the sideline, I'm calling one of those. It was Heath in the slot, and that's where it goes to Heath, who didn't have anybody in the area on first down. Yeah, well, both corners on that side, the corner and the nickel playing 10 yards off. So what do you do? You run your outside receiver off to take that deep defender, and your slot guy runs a little quick out. Football's easy. Easy when you look to the sideline, you see what the defense they line up in. Well, there's also nobody running at you in this booth, well, yeah, at least yeah. for now. You need to back up. <laughs> First hey, down, well, gain of 10. More space now at the top of your screen. I come back to the same thing. That's Heath again in the slot. Barnes, a little sidestep. Nifty run for Barnes. Inside the five and out of bounds. First and goal, Kansas State. That's just a great run. This is just a great run by Barnes. They're going to try to get off tackle to the left side. You leave the defensive end because you don't think he can get there. And when nothing's there front side, that's a playmaker. Cutting the ball back. That's why zone schemes are so dangerous at times. That cutback is often where you hit the play the biggest. You said early that Dimmel will show you where the ball's going. And he is in in the broken eye in front of Barnes. Play action. Delton with a stiff arm. He turns it upfield and leaps. He is out of bounds before the goal line. Well, they tried to go to Dimmel. Tried a little play action. Tried to find your fullback in the slot. Excuse me, in the flats. Wasn't there. Down here inside the five-yard line, time and time again, we've seen Kansas State with little trickery. Had a jump pass. Barnes threw a touchdown. Last game. I wouldn't be surprised if... They're going to run on this one, but if you say it comes with a, up with a stop, they're going to have something up their sleeve. Dimmel straight ahead. No signal yet. He is down. It's third down and goal. But. A little fullback dive. Demos called for it again. He said, let's do it again. Oh. Hard to tell where his body and knee went down. Ended up on the right side of the goal line, but. See if dad calls a play for him to get him back in. His father, the offensive coordinator in his final game. I'd come right back to it. Dimmel trying to drive the legs, and he's pushed back. Marcus Moore, the freshman for UCLA, was in on it. And they do. They come right back with a fullback dive. But this time, right side of that defensive line, you see him knife low to stop those blockers. And Moore finishes it off. That's, that's important there. Don't fall with the pile, but grab the guy and pull him back. It's a great job by 95, Marcus Moore on the outside. And why not? Jed Fish is doing it. Bill Snyder saying, I'll roll the dice, too. 12 touchdowns last year for Dibble. Who's going to get this This is going to be a quarterback sneak, and those three guys are going to help push him in. Timeout first. 
Play clock was winding down. Fourth and goal for Kansas State when we come back. Hi, so I just got off the phone. Makes the call for Sun to get him into the end zone. Winston pushed to the one, didn't get in. Fourth down, Kansas State. They've only gone for seven of these all year. It's going to be a QB sneak. Push that quarterback in from behind. Delton juggled the snap initially. He fights toward the goal line. No signal. Touchdown! That's the hardest you'll fight for a foot on a football field. This is legal now. Remember the old Matt Liner getting pushed in by Reggie Bush? Oh, you line up three of your big boys behind you and you tell them, just push me in. That is 22 guys within about a five-yard radius of each other, all fighting to get some yards. It's a good call. I thought they might come out with a wrinkle, but hey, that'll work. Kansas State was dead last in the country in fourth down conversions coming into this game. And they score on fourth and goal after first and goal from the five, second and goal from the two, third and goal from the one. They get the last yard with Delton on the touchdown. That was almost a phew. Yeah. <laughs> Little sigh of release. Relief. Jed, oh. Come on. He knows there's no way that that's going to get reviewed and overturned. Not a chance. Celebrating its 11th year sponsoring Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. So Kansas State winners of four of its last five to get into a bowl game after a little bit of an early season Big 12 swoon trying to win back-to-back -back bowl games. They won last year. Trying to do that for the first time since 1999-2000. Johnson the return and he drives across the 20. So Devon Monster takes over the steering wheel from Josh Rosen in this game. He's 13 out of 20 for 237 and two. He's been efficient. Every time he's got a chance to play, he's been efficient. 14 of 18 against Cal in a, in a second half victory where he led him from behind. It's the deep passes. I mean, look at two TV passes of 50 plus yards. Josh only has one of those on the season. You getting the Cleveland Browns on the phone or what? <laughs> not, that, not, not so fast. Oleron Fundme is back in at tailback for UCLA. And he's really got nowhere to go on this first down run. Ball came loose. Kansas State has it with Goolsby, and it's Wildcat football. Disaster for UCLA. Goolsby's been all around the football tonight, plays really well in the box and in the scrum here. You stand the guy up and you go for the ball. Look at that. That's what you teach a DB. When there's already someone engaged in the tackle, you always go for the strip. And when his team needed it maybe the most, this is a great field position for Kansas State to answer again. That's a former high school running back. He had 31 touchdowns in his last season as a high school running back. Goolsby just absolutely crowbarred it from his UCLA counterpart.
Delton behind Dimmel, and that's the right way to turn if you're the sophomore quarterback. First down, Kansas State. And great block by Dimmel. What I say? Follow him, you'll follow the ball more often than not. He's been big. You see Dimmel right there, lining up on the left side. Oh, what do you know? He switched back. Delton gets taken down. Oh, Kenny Young may have saved a touchdown. This is why he's dangerous. We've seen him already time and time again tonight. Cutback. He's trying to find Dimmel. Dimmel gets engaged, but sees an opening, and that is a touchdown-saving tackle right there by Kenny Young, who had a career-high 15 tackles in the win against Cal that got UCLA to a bowl game. He's top 15 in school history coming into this game. Dimmel, big block. Delton could not shake the tackle of Young, so third down. There's Ola Runfundme, who had the fumble for UCLA, the 12th fumble the Bruins have lost this year. That's in the bottom quarter of the FBS. Third down, Kansas State. Quick set, quick throw. Heath breaks a tackle, touchdown. Kansas State leads. So the guy who got him to the one-yard line in the Iowa State game to eventually score the winning touchdown with Zuber gives Kansas State its second touchdown in 137 seconds. And go with the check with me system. You can look to the sideline, see if you got the right play on. Watch the eyes here. He sees it. He knows UCLA didn't adjust. Easy throw. Get Tonight, but saving an extra ticket for the Wildcat football team sort of adopted a 12-year-old little boy named Caden Schroeder years back. He passed away earlier this month after an eight-year battle with leukemia. From McPherson, Kansas, he became a statewide celebrity. Coach Snyder even let him score a touchdown in the 2014 spring game. And then the team fundraised his trip to the 2015 Fiesta Bowl. In July, guys, he relapsed for the sixth time, and he passed away December first. The Wildcats honor him today by keeping these two seats empty for their little warrior. It's a neat story for Kansas State and it all started out here during a bowl game essentially during a trip out west and uh, certainly a lot of heavy hearts on that sideline for Kansas State. I remember seeing the video when he scored that touchdown suited up in the K-State purple and silver. Pretty special and you think football players are strong and you think what they go through is tough. Imagine fighting for eight years, relapsing six times. That's some strength you can find some motivation from. And Kansas State right now has found some motivation from their little guy that's looking up, looking down on them from above right now. Bill Snyder has Bill Snyder Family Stadium on the building in Manhattan, and this adds to the definition for Kansas State as lastly he got caught up in the wash this is incomplete it was a forward pass he never really got free out of the break and it's second down all right here's what I like Jason you know halftime's all about adjustments early in the game Kansas State was playing a lot of man press on the outside forcing monster into low percentage throws now on that last play again in a press situation takes away the screen Force you to do a little something different. I expect to see a little bit more of that moving forward. He went right back to it, and lastly, putting his head down to about the 35, third and short. And, and Jason, same play. Yeah. But that time it was against zone. 
so the receiver has some cushion, has some space to work in. If I'm Kansas State, I'm pressing on the outside. I'm taking risks, but forcing mods turn to low percentage throws. Run game doesn't get him there. Jade Kirby was the first man in to swarm Soso Jamabo. Instincts. Sometimes it's not about being in the right position as much as it is about beating somebody to the spot. Jade Kirby's done it a few times tonight already. He beats defenders, beats blockers to the spot, and makes plays in the backfield. Kansas State had no linebacker starts coming back zero. from the last year. Only Power 5 team to have zero returning starts at linebacker. UCLA goes fake. And this is a first down for the Bruins. Jalen Starks takes it, and Jed Fish is using his entire when I become a head coach notebook in this game. All right, this is going to be a direct snap to one of the up backs. This is a check. You're going to see the direct snap right here. This is a check. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily want this to be this far backed up, but when you get the look, you run the check, you run the play, and he gets a lead block there. Numbers were the way they wanted it. It's probably one they've had in their back pocket for two months waiting to call it's a big time to have it land but for UCLA and Jed Fish you're playing with house money right now so why not it worked out perfectly now the reverse Christian Kabiko is undercut by Walker the safety comes up he's out of Long Beach and he doused Pabico from his same town well that's a heck of a play by Eli Walker coming from the safety position that's a reverse he reads that the entire way We've seen Denzel Goolsby making those plays, but his backup, Eli Walker, big play there for the stop. That's lastly the leading receiver in motion for UCLA. Monster has it tipped again. Trey Deshaun, the sophomore, with the bat down. It's a couple now tonight that Monster has had batted at the line. Yeah, it's a great job, as I mentioned earlier, by Kansas State. When you don't hit home as a defensive lineman, when you don't get to the quarterback, your job is to put your hands up. UCLA with a good call there, trying to get a nice, easy completion. Try to cut the distance down for third down. Now you're in the third and long. Okay, so I think it's going to be a quarterback draw here. They spread everybody out. Quick set, quick throw, sideline route, and Ola Run Fund Me is spun out of bounds. Jade Kirby finished the deal. So look, you're at the 50-yard line. It's fourth down. You're down four. You just faked it. They're going. Look at this. They're trying to get some tempo, get guys lined up. Look at the eyes on Jed Fish there. He's absolutely locked in. I bet his message to the team before the game was, hey, we're going to leave it all out there. We're going to go for it. We're going to be aggressive. That kind of mentality permeates an entire team. You play at a higher level, leaving it all out there right now. Kirby was late on the field, fourth down for Monster. Over the top, incomplete off Lasley's left hand. The new coach watching over to UCLA falls short on this drive. One of the matchups to watch, I mentioned it early in the game, Jordan Lastly, number two, going against DJ Reed, the dangerous special teams guy, also a good defender. Has a little hand fighting there. That one, he might have hooked his right arm there. Chip getting involved here. Trying not to show too much emotion, but he wants these guys to play well. But what I mentioned, get into man coverage, force this quarterback to throw into tight windows, into contested throws. A good job of going man there on third. If you're UCLA, you want interference on that ball. Yeah, run. absolutely. Probably could have got it. Dimmel is dropped by Kenny Young. And don't forget, you're going to be on your couch tomorrow all day long. 1.30 Eastern time, Southern Miss and Florida State, the walk-ons Independence Bowl. 5.15, they're like shadow boxing. Iowa and B.C., two run games. And Texas and Missouri in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. Kansas State was just there. All three games available on the ESPN app. Love that Texas and Missouri matchup. Old Big 12 rivals. 
Missouri's offense is playing as good as anybody in the country. Delton hits Dimmel, and it's third down. Missouri's offense will be under new management coming up with Josh Heupel as Dimmel is injured. Josh Heupel going to UCF. And Jed Fish has been in conversations for that Missouri spot. This would be a big loss. Dimmel injured. And you can tell he's already got an apparatus on that shoulder. Falls right on it. They work on Dimmel on the sideline. End of the third quarter. Kansas State trying to complete the comeback. Mania. That is, I'm told, Candy Cane Lane here in Phoenix. Lois's very festive brother. Through the swirly, twirly gumdrops. You okay and over I there? I walked through the Lincoln Tunnel. Yeah, it's Christmas. Elf, one of my favorites. What Come are on your now, favorite Jason? food groups? Yeah, that too. Yeah, there you go. So third down for Kansas State. Delton bides his time and is going to be very close. It depends on where he reached the ball to. One official's got it right at the 40. Another one was short, and they do give him the first down. And he's showing some patience on those runs, but the reason he's showing patience, this is an RPO. They run a slant on the outside. He's got the option to pass this, tucks it, and gets the first down. Ooh, I it was don't close. know. It was close. Let's see. Are they going to call it? I don't know that ball ever got into the 40. No, nope. they like it. Wow. Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. Did UCLA burn a timeout to try to force the review? I think that was an announcement of a review. You know, this is a learning experience for Jed Fish as well. On the field, the runner made the line to gain. The previous play is under review. There is no timeout charge to UCLA. I but think he's short -term. Would have, Yeah, I, I think he might be too. But the gamesmanship, you're, you're not an offensive coordinator now. You're a head coach. you got to realize when you got to call these timeouts. you got to worry about the defense on the field. And let's see. Marker's clearly right at the white line. And the knee goes down there. The ball looks short to me. And it never got past that. Yeah. That's a friendly spot. It's not going to be friendly. That was going to be easy. Remember the last one we did? It was, it was razor thin. The official on the far side you saw at the very end of the replay, he was coming in. You saw his footfalls on the sideline. He had it short and then got overruled by the official on hey, the near that, side. It's that right foot, left foot spot. Which one's it going to be? <laughs> he got the left foot spot. Should have been a right. Watch the feet of the official on the top of your screen as the play he, ends. Knee is down. Ball is right there. That is short. Let's see where this official comes in. You see him? Oh, yeah. He was right. The official further from the ball was actually right on the spot there, but... Easier one than the last review we had. After review, the runner was down short of the line to gain at the 39 and a half yard line. It will be fourth down. The clock will start on my signal. Remember, Kansas State is without its lead fullback as well, Winston Dimmel. He went out with the injury. So what's the call going to be right. here? We'll see. I'll tell you what the call is going to be. It's going to be behind this offensive line because you couldn't see it. But as soon as that was ruled short, these offensive linemen started going, we're going for it. We're going for it. Put it behind us. So. We're going to see another run here. 245 on the ground for Kansas State, who again has gone only eight times on fourth down all season. It's last in the FBS. If they do run it, wouldn't be surprised if it's a zone read to give Delton the option to run. And they're going to change up the play. And a whistle before the snap. Timeout, Kansas State. Timeout. 
All right, let's take a look at the Bowl Challenge Cup brought to you by Progressive while Kansas State thinks this over in a 21-17 score. And the ACC at 1-0 thanks to the game that you just saw, the Quick Lane Bowl. Duke beating Northern Illinois and a good showing from the Sun Belt, the Mountain West, and the Americans so far. Kansas State trying to hold the mantle for the Big 12. Yeah, I was going to say, getting that W column here, Big 12 fans. And Dimmel returns. There's your guy. He's not in the game. But having him back looks like it's going to be good. Olivia, what do you have? Yeah, guys, Winston Dimmel went into the locker room holding that left shoulder, which, as you mentioned, already had a harness on it. He was verbally upset. Big part of the successful run game, guys. Great to see him back out here. But he's not on the field for this fourth down and one. It's Barnes the tailback with Delton. Barnes first down and more. A lot more. Everything more. Touchdown. Alex Barnes took that one all the way, but let me tell you what, the threat of Alex Delton as a running quarterback pulled two defenders off of Barnes and allowed him to hit a short cut back and have nobody in front of him. Look, it's been a big couple of weeks for Alex Barnes. He scores a touchdown in the bowl game. He's a huge Star Wars fan. The new Star Wars came out. He used to watch marathons with his mom when he was growing up. So you talk about a big 14 days. Barnes into the end zone. Three possessions, three touchdowns in the second half for Kansas State. So having the threat of a running quarterback, which they're going to give the zone here, but this quarterback, the threat would be to keep it this way. That's going to pull two defenders with the quarterback, and then Barnes is able to take it to the house. Watch this develop here as 91 and 11 both go or hesitate worrying about Delton running the football and nobody there for the cutback. The influence of a running quarterback. So you're saying Delton helped create Absolutely. That. It's the threat. The threat of a running quarterback. When Delton has had the night that he has, that gets eyes. So if there's even a threat of Delton keeping that ball, that takes now two defenders. Which Keyshawn Lucier South, that's not his responsibility. His responsibility is the cutback. Number 91's responsibility was the quarterback. But the threat of the running quarterback takes both, and that's why that play spits for a touchdown. A little fire up time for the offensive line from Barnes and now Holmes looking for a big play for UCLA, suddenly down a couple scores. And the great kick coverage team for Kansas State does the trick just across the 20. Bowl Mania continues Saturday, a couple more games. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, Washington and Penn State, that's 4 Eastern time. Then the Capital One Orange Bowl, Wisconsin against the turnover chain. Both games on the ESPN app, Penn State. Penn State loves the Fiesta Bowl. Like, <laughs> loves Arizona. 6-0 all time at the Fiesta Bowl. Going to be the last time we see Saquon Barkley in a college jersey, and he's something special. Didn't have quite the, the end of the year that maybe matched the beginning where he was a Heisman front runner, but he's a special running back, and he's going to land somewhere in the NFL and be very successful. At Iowa a couple times this year, and Josie Jewell, the very strong linebacker for the Hawkeyes, said, look, Saquon Barkley's special because... He has that extra element of being able to go over the top of yeah. you that most guys don't have. Got a few deep passes this year where he just flat out beat a corner. Quick set, Theo Howard is stood up by Duke Shelley. Nice tackle. All right, I love this. I love this. If you're a UCLA fan right now, you're thinking, oh, shoot, we're down 11. We got to get big chunk plays. No, no, no. There's 13 minutes left. You're not going to get 11 points in one play. So don't panic. Don't push too early. Play within the confines of the offense that has made you successful to this point, which has been those successful short dink and dunk passes when Kansas is in off coverage and capitalizing. Monster 
Goes to the outside again. Lastly, gets chopped down by Eli Walker a couple of yards short. So this pass defense that's second worst in the country coming into today has played well at least so far. Open field tackling on this drive. A lot of loft on that, and Pabico got his hands on it, but couldn't reel it in. And what do we see? Third down, man coverage. This is a great throw. This is actually a very accurate throw, but a contested throw in against man coverage, it's difficult. We've seen that adjustment. We've seen that, excuse me, we've seen that adjustment by Kansas State. More man coverage, especially on third. Off the very first three and out of this game for the UCLA offense, Flintoft helps them flip the field, and what a choice that was for DJ Reed to go backward to the one-yard line. Whoa. He got a win, but also brought scores of fans to the game, and he got a very worthy bath at the end of that because this team nearly lost its division one status as alex barnes spins out of a tackle into the arms of young and look bill snyder told us when he first got the job the attendance was so low they're going to get kicked out of division one it was either join division two or drop football altogether first year they go one and ten in 1989 but he used that attendance number to drive people to the game and say look we're going to lose what we have if you don't come and he got the program on the on the right track and as good of an x's nose coach he is that's also what you got to be is a ceo and really your own best marketer to get your fans involved and, and, and back when a time when it wasn't facilities, it wasn't cool uniforms, it was show up and see the product, he turned this thing around and it's the reason he's highly regarded as one of the best there is. And the questions abound. Will he come back? Will he not? There was a report out that he said was erroneous when we talked to him this week before the game. He has not made up his mind about whether or not he is going to coach in the future after this game for Kansas State. Yeah, and is that the best scenario for recruits and for the program as a whole? Maybe not, but when you've done what Bill Snyder has done, when you've had the success that he's had, you've earned your right to think about it after making yet another bowl game. Delton rummaging for the first down. Downstairs, Olivia. Yeah, guys, a lot of Bill Snyder's decision comes down to private conversations with his family, but he also says, hey, as long as I'm effective in helping shape young men, set up a value system to create opportunities beyond football, that's really the first thing he looks at. But then after he consults his family and the administration, he gets a heartbeat of what the fans want. He reads copious amounts of letters, emails, a good deal of research goes into that, guys. One part of the reason that family is so important, too, is because his son, who played at Kansas State, is a coach for him, and there have been some reports as well about Bill Snyder wanting his son to take over the program. Delton to the 20. There is Sean Snyder, who played at Kansas State, the special teams guy right now for the Wildcats. Yeah, and an extremely capable coach, and... Here's my opinion, though. In this day and age, in recruiting the way it is, the flashy uniforms, the facilities, the sexy head coaching hires, you, you need to make a splash at times. And I think it wouldn't be as big of a splash as, as maybe Kansas State needs or, or maybe they should do, even though it may be successful. We'll see what happens. But in the back of my mind, Jason, I keep coming back to a name in the SEC that – has had a, a, a track record of running the football in Brett Bielema. And I, and I know it didn't go the way he wanted at Arkansas, but if I'm looking at eventually replacing Bill Snyder, the great Bill Snyder, I think Brett Bielema would be a good fit here in, for Kansas State. You, you say making the splash, and UCLA gets Chip Kelly, and they yeah. get the big name and that guy, but are things going so wrong for Kansas State? No, they, they've no. won eight straight bowl games, so you, do you need the splash at that point? <sighs> No, and, and like I said, it's, it's not that Bill Snyder's son, Sean Snyder, is not capable and, and could do a very, very good job as a head coach. But 
I just think this is a we're in a different era of being a head coach. We're in an era where you can go to three, four straight bowl games, win 10, 11 games, and you have a season of seven, you might be out the door. And they might pay you $10 million to be out the door. But that, the counter to that is that's not how it works in Manhattan, Kansas. Right. And that's not how it has worked in Manhattan, Kansas. But here's what I'll say to that. If you well, counter to your counter, we're boxers here going back and forth. Being successful in college football now is about making the college football playoffs. It's about winning championships and getting a chance to compete for national championships. So every move you make as a program should be a step in that direction. Not a lateral step, not a step back, but a step in the direction of competing for national championships. This run game over 300 yards and Barnes accelerating for another first down. I mean, four teams make the college football playoff, though. If it's all about that, then we don't have these moments of, you know, we've talked about Christian Pubico, the walk-on, totally. Kenny Young in his senior season playing at a baseball stadium wearing Jackie Robinson's number. There are moments in these bowl games that aren't college football playoff moments that are perfectly wonderful moments for sports. 100%, and, and I completely agree. I think there's a lot that goes into just bowl games and, and how how beneficial that can be to programs that are middle of the road or even top tier programs from a recruiting standpoint, a player development standpoint. So that wasn't meant to slight these bowl games or the success that Kansas State has had by any means. Byron Pringle, who is one of those success stories, by the way, he makes just catch number two on the night. But here's a young man who got four years probation from some crimes at age 16. He sat out as a high school junior in the Tampa area. Originally, he was going to go to Youngstown State, got arrested again. And Bill Snyder took a chance after he went to junior college. And Pringle has been a major home run threat for Kansas State this year. I mean, Jason, uh, home run threat is an understatement. He's averaging over 25 yards of reception. 25 yards a reception. I mean, he is as big play as a receiver as they come. So maybe not home run threat, maybe Archie Bradley triple threat <laughs> yeah, here at Chase go. Field. There you go. Pickett on the chase, and he did get to the legs of Delton before he could be on target to Pringle second down. This Kansas State team had to fight to get into this bowl game, winning four out of five to close, and it was not Delton for the most part. It was Skylar Thompson that got him there, but Delton has outplayed Thompson, the legacy Kansas State quarterback, by a pretty wide margin tonight, wouldn't you say? Yeah, when you have two guys that have played and both had success, you go with a hot hand. And, and right now, Delton's got the hot hand, and they're riding it. Silman, some fresh legs in for Barnes, and it's third down. You said keep him under 200 on the ground. Where are we at? Mm, it's not great. Show me the bad news. I think it's uh, 319. Oof. Yeah, Kansas State, they've had their way, and really it's been the chunk plays that Alex Delton has been able to, to rip off, and to that extent, the threat he's been and allowed Alex Barnes to hit a few big ones as well. Took a second. We had to get new batteries in the tote board <laughs> yeah, after yeah. 325 yards of the ground. Timeout UCLA. It looked like. What do we have? Hmm. Jed Fish doesn't know either. Now refs are going to convene here and try to figure it out. Might have had a down marker issue for the moment. This is another thing that was not in Jed Fish's When I Become a Head Coach journal. Substitution infraction on the defense. 12 players in formation. Five-yard penalty. First down. I don't know how big you are in a lip reading, but the last thing that Jed Fish said wasn't, <laughs> and, wasn't and great. That's because that is a very, very big play. You, you give, I was just about to talk about how big this third down is. Now Kansas State with a fresh set of downs, six minutes, 44 seconds left in this game, and UCLA is down 11. They're desperate for a stop right now. Got to be tired, too, defensively. Yeah. I mean, with a, yeah. 
As much as Kansas State been running the football, that means UCLA has been chasing that many yards as well. They're going to milk every second of this play clock that they can. Delton finds Heath, and he gets out of bounds, even though he didn't want to. And a flag comes in with some post-play malfeasance on the sideline. That is not good news for the Bruins. Jordan Lastly, who has had some... After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, UCLA number two. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's number two's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. And Lastly's on the sideline, watch. Uh, I mean, as a former player, I don't know. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't be trash talking when you're an offensive player and your defense is out there. It's been a rather checkered career at UCLA. Lastly, he's been awesome when he's been on the field, but he missed a team bus at one point, suspended for three games. He was suspended his first week on campus when he got to UCLA, and there, a major penalty. Delton goes down in a heap with Kenny Young once again. UCLA has not seen the ball in a long while. That's a long drive right now that Kansas State's on. 5.45 to go. Kansas State trying to win back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time since 2000. What are your children? The Cactus Bowl, brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage. It all begins with home. And Coors Light, the key to a good offense is a refreshing defense. Climb on. All right, so we knew coming in that Kansas State could run the ball and UCLA could pass the ball, and we've seen a lot of running from K-State, but Alex Delton with that touchdown pass to Dominique Heath has an 11-point lead, and uh, things are getting a little hairy for the Bruins. <laughs> I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. On the football field as well, because they need to stop. They need to get this ball back with five, still over five and a half left, down 11. They got to make sure they're down 11, too. Yeah. Quick toss, and Heath is whipped out of bounds with a flag coming in. Jaleel Wadu, the senior, who went to the same high school as Rosen. Number four, half the distance of the goal penalty, first down. And I think you're starting to see the frustration of this football team, not only being down 11, but the adversity they've gone through. Coach Jim Mora getting fired. The wildfires in Southern California disrupting their practice plans. A new head coach. I mean, this has been a, a really a last month of turmoil for UCLA. They've held it together, but focus is often really affected by what's going on outside the game as well. And you can see the frustration. Especially when you're down. Yes. It, that amplifies it. Valentine in for Dimmel in that fullback spot. Delton follows him, so a drive that started at the K-State 2 has made it inside the UCLA 5. And as good as Delton's been tonight, you got to credit Colin Klein, the quarterback coach. He's dealt with three different starters at that position for Kansas State. Obviously, he was pretty good himself, the Heisman finalist at K-State, a dual-threat quarterback. And when you talk with... These quarterbacks, they say, hey, we can relate to him. He speaks our language, and, and that's a barrier that sometimes coaches and players miss. So to have a guy that's done it, grooming three guys that need the advice and are low on experience, he's done a great job. 
Delton picks his way in. Touchdown. How about that? All the hype, all the talk coming in was about the cardiac kid, Skylar Thompson, and what he's done late in the season, and the superstar of the night, Alex Delton, just adding to his stellar performance. No Josh Rosen tonight for UCLA. And frustration setting in for the Bruins, but Alex Delton, who was the first signee in the 2015 class for Kansas State, gets in again. What a night. Football's simple when you can run the football. You're confident, you're athletic, talented, and K-State's up 18 and rolling. The college football playoff semi. By Northwestern Mutual, Oklahoma, and Georgia. Then immediately following Clemson, Oklahoma, Clemson, Alabama in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Both games available on the ESPN app. So Oklahoma, Georgia, Clemson, Alabama, the pit of misery is where they want to send UCLA, evidently. I hear a lot of dilly-dillies from the winners. <laughs> Let's give out our Capital One player of the game. It's Alex Delton. Yeah, I mean, to come off the bench and to give a spark, first and foremost, it was the big plays that Delton was able to make with his feet that turned this game around for Kansas State. And then you see the recognition. Look at that little peek to the left. Sometimes it's all it takes to see you got some leverage. The UCLA is outnumbered on the outside. He did it with his feet. He did it with his arm. And capped off a big drive for the dagger. He's a gunslinger. I mean, he's from Hayes, Kansas. That's Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane territory. Really, really lacks some confidence, too, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? He certainly was ready to play. I mean, that was very clear when he came in and his first play went 68 yards for a touchdown. As that's incomplete for Howard. You can win yourself at least the inside track to a job next year in this game. I mean, it's not everything, but you can win uh, at least a part of a heart, right? Yeah, I mean, not to discount what Skylar Thompson was able to do at the end of the season with comeback wins against Iowa State, Texas Tech, a big upset of Oklahoma State. He played well, really well, and there's a lot of promise with him as well. But you have a performance like this in a bowl game when your team needed it off the bench, and you're going to be the guy, the leader in the clubhouse going into spring. You feel great, at least. <laughs> you do. Lastly, with the catch at the sideline, and it's uh, picture time for the Wildcats. Is that a stuffed I, Wildcat? That's that's interesting. That's something. You're not a big taxidermy <laughs> guy, are you? <laughs> First down for UCLA and Devon Monster. Roams to the 50-yard line. What do you think of Monster tonight? I was just going to say, Chip Kelly's up in a... Offense, in a number 75. This is coming back. Penalty, first down. Chip Kelly's up watching this game right now, and I think there's a lot of positives to be taken out of Devon Monster's performance tonight. We knew he was a better athlete than Rosen. He could use his legs, but I was really impressed with his decision-making, his accuracy. There's one thing talking to Jed Fish that he was worried about is driving the ball to the outside and playing with urgency. I think he did both those things really well tonight. UCLA on the defensive side just was not able to get enough stops and get off the field against Kansas State's rushing attack. You wonder what would have happened if not for the Olerun Fundme fumble on the short field as well, which helped turn the game. You know what's crazy, Jason? You look at the score, 35-17. If it ends with this score, you might say, ah, it wasn't a close game. It's amazing how plays like a fumble, one or two plays in a game completely change how it plays out. And so it was much closer than the scoreboard will show at the end of this game, but Kansas State, rightfully so, dominated on the ground and, and closed this thing out. Ola and Fund Me, by the way, just moments ago, was looking up at the screen when he was on the screen here in the stadium and realized that he was on the screen while he was talking to Brandon Stevens. That's never good. I don't uh, want to see what I look like right now. Third down and nine, and what presumably is the final game in one of those jerseys for Josh Rosen. You think maybe top overall pick? I think so. Um, it, it's going to depend. I know he had some words about 
the draft and how sometimes it's better to you don't no flag there in the secondary but sometimes as a quarterback Rosen stated earlier that it's better to get picked up later and go to a better situation rather than early to a team like Cleveland Browns we'll see how it sorts out been a, been a couple quarterbacks of recent memory that played a part in their own destiny at times you wonder if that's in the cards for a guy like Josh Rosen when you see what Eli Manning was able to do in going to a team that he preferred over the one that initially drafted him a lot to be sorted out though I think he's talented I think he's the most pro ready quarterback I think will be the first one off the board fourth down and monster hits lastly for a first down Josh Rosen got something of a bad rap for being as a flag comes in so this may not stand and lastly he's doing a little talking to Duke Shelley while he's at it holding offense number 69 10-yard penalty fourth down it's on Turan but Rosen got something of a bad rap for being ultra inquisitive and maybe some people said acting too smart for his own good he's an intelligent intelligent young man I see no problem in making statements against the grain you know as a as a GM or as a team I want a quarterback that's not afraid to speak his mind but does it intelligently and backs it up it's nice to see somebody a, a little bit different yeah absolutely right? he spent most of this drive trying to figure out what pass interference is fourth down and 19 lastly swatted Sullivan away but is taken out of bounds on fourth down and 19 he's well short Kansas State will get it back and we'll step aside before Bill Snyder gets doused did you know that 90 percent of early stage startups fail and less than one percent actually succeed Kadima recognizes the importance of connecting early stage startups while leveraging a suite of resources with investors and established companies that have a we saw on our airwaves in high school has grown up and is on his way presumably to the NFL draft yeah and there's a lot of reasons why the numbers speak for themselves but really the intangibles and his ceiling is is well higher than what he's achieved just here in college based on his skill set his arm strength his accuracy the intangibles that you can't put on a piece of paper which are the confidence and the leadership skills as well Hunter Hall in at quarterback and there's a nice run for Kansas State and Tyler Burns who's checked in so Hall the sophomore now the fourth quarterback to take snaps for Kansas State and look if you're Bill Snyder and you look at what Delton did today there's at least a little bit of an inside track there is that uh, was Mike McCoy who checked in for Kansas State and an injured party is Wadu for UCLA. I think if you're Kansas State, you want to run the football and you want a quarterback that can run the football. And as good as Dylan Thompson, excuse me, Skyler Thompson was, Alex Delton showed tonight that he might be QB number one headed into the offseason. Don't forget, tune into the ESPN 3 postgame trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following the game. That's a that stuffed yeah, wildcat. Is, that's creepy, honestly. Who threw their stuffed animal on the field? I'm just kidding. Tyler Mitchell is in charge of that. <laughs> Rally Wildcat. Yeah. Hey, they rallied. What a job by Bill Snyder, though, in halftime. Just said, you know what? We just need to stay the course. A wise and simple words by a guy that's seen a lot of football. Didn't panic down 10. Just said, you know what? Made some mistakes, stay the course, execute better, and they did. They won the second half 28 to nothing. This is McCoy again. And don't forget, Sports Center immediately following this game. Conversation with Dabo Sweeney plus Isaiah Thomas on his trade from Boston. Sports Center immediately following us on the ESPN app and on ESPN. Mel Kuyper also will be along for the ride on the draft value of one Josh Rosen. So stay tuned. Nicole Briscoe and Neil Everett have that 
for you. What do you think of players having a say in who they get drafted by in the NFL, or at least pushing? Well, I see it from both sides. You know, you, you're not taking an opportunity, you're given an opportunity by a team, but you've also earned the right to be one of the best players in college football. So you've earned the right to some degree to control your own destiny. So I see it both sides. Uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm a player, you, you got to be selfish to some degree. You got to be selfish in, in what could be your livelihood, not just playing football, but your livelihood, money that can span generations, what you can do for your family, what good works for charity you can do. I and mean, there's a lot more than just playing football that being a top draft pick and having a long career can do for you. And he'll stand up for himself, too. When he was yeah. younger, he was on the junior tennis circuit, and he went up to his coach one day and said, look, very nonchalantly, I'm done. I'm not playing tennis it's anymore. It's a good thing he stuck with or didn't stick with tennis. He made the right choice. And another run for Kansas State and Tyler Burns. You get the feeling that Josh Rosen would succeed in anything he does, but Kansas State's run game, 340-plus yards for Bill Snyder. And again, it's up in the air whether or not this is his final game as the head coach. If it is, it's a bang-up success in the second half. What a testament to the kind of person he is, the kind of coach he is, to have a team fight through adversity this entire season come from behind and then again in a bowl game when they needed the most come from behind and, and really dominate the second half as you mentioned 28 to nothing here in the second half that, that's that's a well coached team one of four guys to go in active to the college football hall of fame Bill Snyder gets win number 210 at Kansas State Unbelievable performance, a lot to be hopeful for with or without Bill Snyder. Hopefully he's back. Love watching the Bill Snyder coach football team, and a lot of talent will return. Headlined by Alex Delton in the night he had at quarterback for the Wildcats. Three rushing touchdowns, a buck 58 on the ground. His first run went 68 yards for a touchdown, and his Wildcats are winners of the Cactus Bowl 2017. Likely the final game for Josh Rosen. Will it be the last game for Bill Snyder at Kansas State? If it is, it's a win. 35-17 is your final score for the Wildcats. As Bill Snyder seeks out Jed Fish for the postgame handshake, which leads to an embrace. 35-17, your final score, ESPN3, the postgame trophy ceremony. Sports Center is now.